it's me Renee, I'm back. And today, as you can see, I'm doing the Sleeping Beauty book tag, which was created by Alisa Eli from Alisa Eli, the channel. And yeah, it was created just a few weeks ago, and I said I want to do it today. So for once, I'm not going to wait for long to do a tag, and I'll tag it in. And I was tagged in, in it, so yeah, quite fun. Uh, she talked about how Sleeping Beauty was one of her favorite movies growing up. For me, it was kind of interesting because, like, in my household, we, like, my parents, they didn't really, they didn't buy everything that we wanted to, to buy, like, that old parents do that. But, like, for example, my, <clears throat> sorry, my neighbor, she had a lot of movies growing up. Growing up, I think we only had, like, ten, maybe? Like, after a while, I was, you know, when I um, became a teenager, I started to buy books, my, buy movies myself, but, like, when I was young, young, we didn't have that many movies. Uh, one of the ones we had was Sleeping Beauty. And I did see it. I mean, I imagine I saw it. I didn't, I don't really, I don't really have that many memories attached to it, interestingly enough. You know, it was one of the few that we owned. But I did, I did see it and like it. And, um, yeah. And now here I am doing this tag because it's a fun tag. I mean, I'm not going to do something I don't think will be fun. That's just stupid and silly. Yeah. Sorry. Um. So question one, round one, not wanted. So Maleficent wasn't wanted in the in the baptizing. Name an outcast character, deserved or otherwise. Uh, no, here I'm gonna as usual. I'm gonna be quirky. And I'm going to mention a book where there's several outcast characters. And it is Things a Bright Girl Can Do. So this is all about suffragettes during the during, uh, the suffragette era. Well, so the suffragette era was actually quite a few um, <clears throat> sorry, years. No, sorry. So this takes place from 1912 to 1914. So like just before the First World War and... Well, it ends 1915. I think it ends kind of, yeah, like just after the First World War started. Because, so I'm going to double check, but I'm pretty sure that it ends. So, yeah, okay, sorry. It ends 1917, so, yeah. But most of it takes place like before the First World War and a bit during, but, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, yeah are suffragettes, so they're outcast in like the general public because females wanting to have vote, <gasps> the scandal! Uh, but in addition to that, there's, okay, so in this book there's three main characters. You have Evelyn, who's rich, but she wants to go to Oxford, but of course, even though she's rich, her brother's going to go to Oxford, but will she? No, because girls, girls shouldn't. Fill their head with knowledge. No, I mean, that's what her dad thinks. Um, and then, and then, uh, like she ends up becoming a suffragette as well, which is like <gasps> double no. And then you have um, <clears throat> May, who's a suffragette, a lesbian, and a Quaker, so outcast in a lot of ways. And then you also have Nell, who's a working girl, not like a prostitute, prostitute, but like in a in a the working, working class girl, and uh, she has she's also lesbian. She has brothers, and she's kind of for the war. Which I mean, when she becomes a uh, girlfriend with May the Quaker, I mean Quakers being pacifist, it's kind of like a conflict there. And yeah, and yeah, honestly, just check out this book if you want to read historicals. During this period, I mean, a lot of historicals are set during Second World War, so fun to read something during the first one. And yeah, honestly, all in all, just amazing read, so check it out. Then we have... Give me the next prompt, give me... Let me find it, okay. <clears throat> the gifts. What is a gift? A talent, skill, ability that character is born with? So, yeah, here I'm going to go with... Yeah, what was I thinking here again? Because, yeah, I, I'm so smart. I find books and then I 
forget what I want to do with them. Um, hmm. Hmm. What was I thinking? Uh, I'm not quite sure what I was thinking. Yet. You know what? Yeah, I kind of know what I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so in the Vampire Academy series, the Dampiers, they are born with like, not superhuman, but they're, yeah, more than human strength. So, yeah, like fighting strength and ability. So, yeah, I suppose that's, that's a skill. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with that one. I was like, kind of okay, I was like, what was I thinking? I don't remember what I was thinking, but yeah. But it works, anyway. So, let's find the next prompt. Or need the character make a choice that seemed for the best, but uh, affected, affected others negatively. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, so, okay, so, yeah, I mean, this tag fun. But some of the some of the prompts are kind of a bit difficult. So some I kind of skipped, and this one, I yeah, because skip because I couldn't really figure out something to work with this one. Though I mean, it's not a difficult prompt per se, but I couldn't think of one, so I'm skipping it. The plan. Who is the character who always has a plan, or well, at least tries to? Okay, here we have. Harriet Myers from the Geek Girl series. She likes to have a plan. She likes lists, and yeah, she likes to know what's happening. And yeah, she definitely, more almost always has a plan. And um, yeah, Harriet Myers from this series. Also, yeah, check out this series. Amazing. Then we have. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> What is a book with a holy trope where someone tries to make a day perfect but doesn't turn out as planned? Yeah, here I'm gonna go say I don't know. I'm skipping, skipping this one as well, so I'll skip, skipping two. Yep, I am doing that. Um, Flora, what character is the leader of the friend group? Okay, so here we have no, because I have a few more for you. Okay, yeah, so this one was also, I actually also skipped because, I don't know, I kind of felt difficult, so skipped it. But the next prompt is, which I'm doing, is, uh, what character is the mom friend of the group? You know, the one who always makes sure everyone has food and all that stuff. So I'm going to go with Lissa from the Vampire Academy. She always wants everyone to be happy, and she always thinks of everyone all the time. and. Uh, Wait a moment, I think I may have four or something. No? Yeah, I mean, I love to improvise my videos because I don't really like to plan. Well, I like to plan, but I don't like to plan. But, like, then it bites me in the ass because now I'm kind of thinking, like, what was I thinking? Did I, did I have an idea for some things here? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to move on. Um, blah, blah, blah. What character is a naysayer who usually has a point? Um, yeah, I'm going to skip this one as well because I don't really know. Uh, blah. Like many Disney princes, uh, Philip has a few character traits. Has few character traits. One of them is being best friends with with his animal companion. Name a favorite favorite animal companion. This honestly was a bit difficult, but I found a book that suited it. And this is a Christmas source by Tom Fletcher. I have it in original, you see. And <clears throat> so, blah blah blah. Yeah, anyway, so this is all about 
uh, William and his friend the Christmasaurus. I believe the Christmas. Maybe yeah. Sorry, yeah. His name is the Christmasaurus. His dinosaur is called the Christmasaurus because he's raised on the North Pole. And yeah, so he's a dinosaur. He he has feelings, but he, he can talk. So animal companion. And yeah, he's just a lovely, lovely di dinosaur. A nice dinosaur. And then we have. Nope, don't give me a moment. Something happened. A moment. Fail. Um. WF. <clears throat> New includes something bad into something good. Now, here. Yes. So, in Emilia Westlake was never here. Uh, so, they it starts as. Two people meeting in, uh, God, what's the word again? They meet in, uh, oh, when you, when, you, when you do something in school and then you have to sit back. They meet in, oh, the breakfast club thingy. They meet, not in recess. You know what, I'm going to check it out. And I'm back. So the word was detention. So, in this book... Harriet and Will uh, meet in detention. detention. They're both male females. Will sometimes, I mean, uh, Will and Mina. Uh, but yeah, um, and they all of them. Will is kind of a troublemaker, uh, but they end up making this plan of doing, of doing pranks, like pranks as like a demonstration, like political demonstrations against the sexists policies at the school, so they're doing something bad, you know, pranks, they're going against the rules, but they're doing it for a good reason, so, yeah, this book, and yeah, this book, everyone should read it, amazing book, very, very good book, book, I don't know why I say it. book, book, <laughs> suddenly I'm, I'm yelling the word book at you, book, book, I don't know what I'm doing, anyway, let's move on, and then we have, last but not least, well, next to last but not least, who is the character, a villain or otherwise, who always has another card up their sleeve? Now, this is a book I'm talking about in quite a lot, I think. Yeah, no, quite a few videos. But it's a book I love, so I'm gonna mention it. And it is Invisibility by Andrew Kramer and David Leviathan. So the villain in this one, it's actually a slight spoiler. Okay, I'm going to spoil it slightly. It's somewhat related to the main character. Well, one of the main characters. Both of these are main characters. And the villain has, like, I suppose not big plans, but plans. And when that big climax happens, it's either awful or awful. Like, the main character can't really choose a happy, happy ending. So the way it ends this book, it ends. I would say it ends bittersweet because no one dies, but it could be better. It could definitely be better. And uh, yeah, this villain uh, also, yeah, definitely this villain in this one is definitely, yeah, he uh, he's not among the best people in the world. Definitely, definitely a villain of, yeah, of some do we really. Yeah, uh, but anyway, check out this book, really good. I mean, it's a book with invisibility, which you really, really see in books. I mean, you see, you see it in movies, but you don't really see it in books. And I really like how the way it's handled in this book. And, um, yeah, it's just a very, very good book. Life-changing, I would say. Life-changing. <clears throat> and then we have... Blah, 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 blah. Disney Sleeping Beauty. What's a retelling that ha that improves on direction or details of original? So I really like uh, retellings. I have a lot of them. Well, like when I thought this question, it's like, hmm, hmm. And then I kind of thought, like, have I have I gotten a lot of my maybe a lot of my retellings I've given away to charity or like because I couldn't really find a lot of them in my bookshelves. But I don't know if I've read it quite a lot. So I don't really know what happened, and so I was like, I think, like, hmm, difficult, a bit difficult, because, yeah, I really enjoy retelling, and finding one that 
because this is just kind of finding a good retelling because I mean a retelling if it just tells the same story again not in a different way it's not retelling it's just uh, rehashing so yeah I end up going with I haven't talked about in forever at all at least in a long time it is the sweet a legacy trilogy by Tevlin Childs. So this is a trilogy with the Ma the ancestors of Medusa, Medusa of Greek mythology fame. In the Greek mythology myth, she was this villain in this universe. She's a misunderstood person who was uh, kind of uh, her story was retold to make her to make her a villain, but she wasn't in yeah, at least in this version. And I really like that because I mean often in the good old days like if you're gonna think about myth mythology and like uh, all sort of classics from the old days often females would either be like just love interest and have one or two lines and they wouldn't really be like have a big role or they would be the villain they would really like have like agency and in this one it's like no it was all wrong and uh, yeah, I haven't also re read this in quite a few years. Maybe I may have to review it. Uh, but I do remember loving it. And uh, yeah, nice trilogy. Uh, and uh, each book has like centered around one of the persons and their, their triplets. They're adopted away so they don't, they aren't uh, raised together, but they are triplets. And like, yeah, so they have to fight this evil theater. And uh, yeah, this series definitely uh, shakes up the Medusa myth story. So yeah, and that is my little Sleeping Beauty book tag take, take, take on that. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Bye.